So how do the 50 megapixel RAW files coming out of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra compare to the RAW files coming out of this 45 megapixel full frame professional level camera by Nikon Z7 II? Well, I've been out here doing some landscape photography side by side with both of these cameras. So let's go ahead and find out. Now the Samsung here can only shoot the 50 megapixels with two of the lenses. So it can't use all four lenses. So it can use the, uh, the 1X lens and then the 5X lens. Now the Nikon camera can shoot 45 megapixels with any lens that you put on it. Now that's one of the main advantages of a dedicated camera like this is that you can switch out lenses for different types of situations, different focal lengths, different apertures, all that kind of stuff. Now the lens that I'm gonna be using for this video is the 24 to 120 millimeter f4 lens. I'll be shooting this at 24 millimeters because that gets me pretty close to that 1x lens on the Samsung and then I'll also be shooting it on the long end around 115 or so and uh, that'll get me close to that 5x lens on the Samsung. Now in terms of aperture, so with the Samsung you can't modify the aperture. It's like fixed on all the lenses. Whereas with the Nikon lens, you can modify that aperture, you can change it to get different depths of field and things like that. I'm gonna shoot the Nikon lens at F8 for pretty much all these images because it performs pretty well at that aperture for landscape photography. To get the cleanest results I can, I'm gonna be shooting both cameras at their base ISOs. Now the Samsung cameras, those have a base ISO of 50, at least when you're shooting manually, and the Nikon, that has a base ISO of 64. Now I might go ahead anyways and crank up the ISO at least for a few shots so we can do some higher ISO comparisons as well, but I'll mainly be shooting at the base ISO. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom and I have a bunch of shots that we will compare here. But before we do that, I do want to point out that there are a couple of different types of RAW files that you can shoot on the S24 Ultra. So there is the standard RAW files and there's what Samsung calls expert RAW files. Now, those expert RAW files use a bit of Samsung's AI or computational photography or whatever you want to call it, you know, but they are actually several RAW exposures blended together and then outputted to a 16-bit DNG RAW file. Now, Samsung says that these expert RAW files actually give more clarity and more dynamic range than regular RAW files. So that being the case, we'll be looking at expert RAW files for this video. Now, if you want me to do a comparison with the normal RAW files at some point, just leave a comment and let me know. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our first shot here. Now, right away, what you'll notice is there's an aspect ratio difference between the two images. So the Samsung has a four x three aspect ratio. The Nikon has a three x two aspect ratio. And uh, you know, one thing I wanna point out here, you know, when we're looking at images globally like this, you're not really gonna be able to see much difference at all because you know, each image here is only taking up around four, four and a half megapixels of area on my computer monitor. You know, so when you're looking at a 50 megapixel image at four and a half megapixels, you're just not really gonna be able to see what's going on in the file. So what I like to do in comparisons like this is just zoom into 100% and then that way we have a one-to-one -one pixel ratio between the images and the computer monitor. So let's go ahead and take a closer look here. You know, and the first thing I'm kind of noticing is the Samsung kind of is definitely like over sharpened. So there's definitely some sharpening baked into those expert raw files. Uh, but you know, there is quite a lot of good detail here in the Samsung. And you know, the Nikon over here, definitely lots of good detail there as well. And the Nikon to me seems to have a bit more like of an organic feel to it where you know the Samsung looks more a lot more digital a lot more crunchy I'm just gonna kind of bring these areas in close I actually zoom into 200% might be a little easier to see it on the YouTube video that way and just you know look at that detail difference here with the Nikon you can just make out all the fine details here in the in the rocks and then in the trees whereas it's just kind of a mess over here on the Samsung you know, comparatively here, let me go back to 100%. But I will say, you know, the Samsung looks pretty good for a phone for sure. I mean, that's it's definitely not bad for something that can fit in your pocket. All right, now this is this next comparison here is the same exact shot, except I underexposed these images because I wanted to kind of do uh, like a dynamic range test and boost up these images. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. Just gonna bring this up to eh, about three stops there. Looks good. And let me go ahead and do the same thing here. All right. And now when we compare these images, 
definitely noticed some discoloration going on. It's like a color shift here on the Samsung. Things kind of, there's like a green color cast it looks like. But let's go ahead and zoom into 100%. Pull these areas over. And now it looks like the Samsung has gotten a lot softer. A lot of the detail that was in the shadows is pretty much gone now. If you look over here on the, the Nikon, you can still make out all of this fine detail in the trees. Whereas over here, the Samsung just not really looking too great there. Let's kind of look at some other areas here. And we'll quickly also compare just the Samsung versus the Samsung. So uh, over here on the left is when we did not boost up the exposure. Then on the right, you can see what happens when we do boost that exposure. The image really falls apart pretty quickly there. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing with the Nikon. You can see the difference there where actually there's not a huge difference at all. It really holds together pretty nicely when you do an exposure boost like that. So definitely the, the Nikon's has quite a bit more dynamic range. And let's go ahead and we'll look at a, another shot here. And I'll just kind of zoom in, look at the level of detail here first. And you know, again, it looks like the Samsung is just over sharpened, kind of has that digital crunchiness to it. I mean, even over in this area, it looks, it's so over sharpened that it's like adding snow. It looks like, I mean, it's not really snow it's, that's there. If you look on the Nikon, go ahead and uh, punch in a 200% real quick here. Kind of take a look at this, some of these details in the rock and over here on the Samsung, it's just pretty soft and smudgy looking. Look up here on the top of the, the peak there. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next shot here. And we'll go ahead and zoom into 100%, take a look at the detail. And I'm definitely seeing a lot more detail over here on the Nikon. I mean, the Samsung definitely, you know, looks okay, definitely for a smartphone, but the Nikon is definitely holding together a lot better there. You know, if we were to, uh, we'll go into 200% here real quick. Maybe see the difference a little bit better. I mean, it's kind of a night and day difference in my view in terms of the level of detail. And I think the colors as well kind of look better to me uh, on the Nikon. Uh, but let's go ahead, we'll move on to the next test here. These shots here are overexposed. So what I want to do is just drag the exposure down and we'll see how the files handle that. And I'm just going to bring this down by 2.25 stops and we're just going to do the same thing here on this file if I can get it right negative 2.25 there we go all right so let's go ahead compare these and you'll see here that the Samsung is definitely not able to uh, handle that type of uh, adjustment nearly as well as the Nikon is and if we zoom in here to 100% you can see that we still have a lot of the highlights are still blown out here. Whereas you have a little bit of highlights that are lost here on the Nikon file as well, but it's not nearly as bad as the Samsung. And again, the detail level is you know, kind of a night and day difference there. You can kind of stop here, you can take a look. Just a pretty big difference. All right, so the next thing I want to do here is kind of move up the ISO range and what I'm, what I'm going to do, we'll look at the Samsung first. And we're going to start at ISO 100 and we're going to go all the way up to ISO 3200, which is the max ISO for the Samsung. So this is ISO 100. This is 200, 400. You can see that color shift when we went from 200 here to 400. And then 800, 1600. 3200 and you can see how things really really fall apart there at 3200 and we'll, we'll look at these a little bit uh, closer here in a second but let's go ahead we'll look at the Nikon as well all right so here is 100 here's ISO 200 400 800 1600 
3200. So you don't really see much difference at all as we move up the range. And the other thing is that the Nikon can go way above 3200. Uh, I just stopped at 3200 for, for this video because the Samsung only goes to 3200. But let's go ahead, let's look at 3200 on the Samsung versus ISO 3200 on the Nikon now, side by side. And you can see there's a huge difference there. And if we go into 100%, you can see that the Samsung has completely fallen apart. All, pretty much all the details gone now at this ISO 3200, whereas over here on the Nikon, it's still holding together quite well. Definitely seeing some noise introduced into the Nikon. Uh, but I mean, compared to the Samsung here, I mean, the Nikon looks amazing comparatively there. And another thing I want to do is let's look at the base ISO of the Samsung versus ISO 3200 on the Samsung. So if we look in here at what happens as you move up the range, things just really, really fall apart there. And then we'll do the same th same thing here with the Nikon. Look at the base ISO of 64 versus uh, 3200 here. And you can see, especially in the shadowy areas, some a uh, little bit of noise is uh, introduced, but it still holds together really, really well. Let's go ahead, we'll move to this shot. So this is just another example at ISO 3200. And as we take a look, you can see the same thing where the Nikon holds together really nicely and the Samsung looks like complete garbage, if I'm going to be honest. I mean, just look at the detail in the trees here versus this is just smudge. Now all these, uh, these next images are shot with the 1x lens on the Samsung. So let's go ahead, we'll take a look here. And you know, the Samsung that still looks over sharpened to me, but I am kind of impressed by all the detail it's able to resolve here. I mean, if you look at the scene, there's all kinds of fine detail going on in this image. We got, you know, all these leaves and ferns and sticks and just all kinds of stuff. I will say, you know, the, uh, the Nikon to me still has more of a richness to the file. It doesn't look over sharpened. But I am impressed here with the Samsung on this image. It's definitely resolving a lot of detail there. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So this is the same exact shot, except I uh, underexposed it a bit, and we'll we'll pull up that exposure here, and we'll go up by three stops. Do the same thing here, and we'll take a look. And you know, the Samsung it doesn't look as good as it did uh, before. A lot of the information in the shadows is gone. If you look at like this area, for example, versus over here on the Nikon, all, like, all that color information here is gone from the Samsung. The, the ferns and everything start to get a bit soft as well compared, compared to uh, the Nikon there. Uh, but it's still, you know, that's pretty, that's a pretty extreme exposure boost, three stops. Um, but, you know, I'm still pretty impressed with the, the Samsung though, that it's able to even do that. But let's go ahead, we'll move on to this next shot. So this is a waterfall image and I used a uh, ND filter on the, uh, on well on both cameras. But uh, for the Samsung, I actually had like a iPhone uh, filter holder that I was able to use and uh, just use my magnetic filters. I'll leave a link in the description to you know all the stuff that I use to make this video if you want to check that out. Now let's go ahead we'll zoom in to 100% here. Look at some of these rocks and you know again I am pretty impressed with the uh, Samsung here. I'm actually gonna boost up the Nikon camera though just just a bit. Just do that, to even out that exposure a little bit. That's a little better. So, I mean, the Samsung is holding together really good. I think that the, the 1X lens on the Samsung is performing quite a bit better than that 5X lens does. I mean, there's I still feel like things are a bit over sharpened on the Samsung files, but overall it looks pretty dang good. 
Look at some of this water flow here. Detail in the rocks. Now I, I think the Nikon still does hold the edge there, but I think the this this lens on the Samsung is is pretty good. All right, so let's go on to the next shot, and we'll just zoom in here. We'll get some of these trees in the back. Now again, I'm a broken record here, but I do feel like the Nikon, or I'm sorry, the uh, Samsung's over sharpened a bit. But overall it looks pretty good still, even though it's over sharpened. Look at some of the detail in here. I mean, it's, it's really kind of hard to tell the difference in a lot of these areas. I mean, overall, I think the Samsung is holding up pretty well with, with that 1X lens. Uh, so one thing I do want to do here though is boost the exposure. Now I'm not actually editing the, the file as I would normally, but I want to show you what happens when we boost the exposure. So we had all those darker areas here in the foreground and you can see that this information is completely gone down there in the Samsung files. I boost the exposure all the way. You can see that those shadows are completely there's devoid of detail. And if we do the same thing here to the Nikon and I boost the exposure, boost up the shadows, you can see it's still retaining that information. So definitely a win for for the Nikon again with terms of dynamic range and be able to push those shadows and this is just an example of again at ISO 3200 versus 3200 uh, this time with the 1x lens on the Samsung and we'll zoom into 100% here and you can see that again the Samsung is not able to really handle those higher ISOs very well now I do feel like it's handling it better than the 5x lens but I think the image is still pretty bad here compared to the Nikon. Now if we were to, let me reset the exposures here. So if we were to look at the base ISO on the Samsung versus ISO 3200, here's what happens. You can see we got, you know, some pretty nice detail back there. Where, but then when we bump up the ISO, we get a huge color shift, lots of detail. Things look pretty bad there. Whereas with the Nikon, when we do a similar thing and we take a look, yes, we have some noise that's introduced, but it's very manageable. And the image just holds together a lot better on the Nikon. So overall, I think that the S24 Ultra has you know, some really great cameras for a phone. And it's, it is super nice that it does have the capability to shoot in RAW, but in my opinion, it still doesn't really compare to a full frame camera like the one that I used in this video. I mean, that said, you know, you can still definitely get some great shots with the phone and it is an awesome creative tool to have with you for sure. Now, I do think that the 1X lens on the Samsung is a better performer than the 5X lens is. You know, so I would like to see some improvement on the telephoto lens in the future. But anyways, leave a comment and let me know what your thoughts are about these comparisons. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will see you on the next video.